First off, let me start off this video by saying, no, this is not sponsored. This isn't an ad for another game. It's a genuine look at the future of Genshin Impact and how I think things will be changing for it really soon. That being said though, if you are a regular follower of the channel, this might contain clips from a game that you maybe haven't seen before or that you don't have interest in. However, I would like to invite you to keep an open mind while watching this video in regards to both the other game and Genshin Impact's problems. If you're a veteran Genshin Impact player like me, you've probably noticed that Genshin Impact is, well, in a weird spot. Since Inazuma's release, Hoyo has been pushing out a lot of new areas on the map and plenty of events and new characters to keep players busy. But for some reason, the magic of Genshin Impact has worn off. It's not that Genshin Impact is a bad game or a dead game or anything. It's obviously a very good one. Genshin was a pioneer to its genre of open world anime RPGs that are available to a mobile audience. The fluidity and sheer amount of content available to new players really does confirm that. But somewhere along the way though, Genshin became tiring for many veteran players. If you're a new player, you may not feel this, but I can assure you there's some people watching this video who will say, yeah, I'm pretty bored of Genshin right now. There's constantly a war on social media over whether or not Genshin doesn't have enough content or if players are just binging it too quickly. But there is one thing that's consistent regardless of whose side you're on, and it's that Hoyo has added a lot of new areas to the game since launch. Surely with new areas to explore, we, the players, should have a lot of incentive to explore as well, right? Well, not quite. Regardless of whether or not areas are new, the gameplay loop remains roughly the same. Exploration is fun and all, but when you've seen every enemy there is to see, every chest there is to loot, and find another quest telling you to collect 200 floating rocks to get 10 heroes wits, it can be exhausting. I find myself logging in only to do dailies and resin, and sometimes I even skip that. Every day I stream on Twitch, chat will ask things like, why do you complain about the game if you haven't 100% every area or done every quest? And the answer to that is that it's just exhausting. The the quests in this game have an ungodly amount of dialogue to sit through, even if they're good quests. There's just a lot to sit through, a lot to process, and it kind of takes a long time to get them done. And honestly, it's not really fair to fault someone because they don't enjoy doing the quests or because they're tired of them. That's just how they choose to play the game. And once you actually start trying to 100% every area, you realize exactly how much of Genshin Impact's gameplay is the same thing repeating itself. And that is something a lot of players can relate to. When players are asking for content, they're not asking for a new region every time. What many are asking for is something new to do. Not go searching for the 300th precious chest in a region that only gives two primo gems for some reason. Not spend 13 hours stuck in a dialogue that walks completely around the premise and development of the main story, but a completely new mechanic or gameplay loop that will make Genshin Impact feel fresh. Well, fast forward a year and a half past Genshin Impact's official release and enter Tower of Fantasy, the second massive open world anime RPG on mobile. As usual, online personalities all jump to the name Genshin Killer, similarly to how every single new MMORPG is named the WoW Killer. And Genshin devs do certainly have something to be afraid of. They don't have to be afraid of a dead game, that's not gonna happen to Genshin Impact anytime soon regardless of what games release, but they will certainly be worried about player mass exodus and massive revenue loss. But but first, let me explain what Tower of Fantasy is. Tower of Fantasy is a new mobile open world anime RPG that features a more sci-fi take on world building. Not that everything is futuristic with flying cars or anything, but there are plenty of high-tech looking buildings and machines and characters do have access to guns. With that being said though, it is still overall more of a fantasy setting. Unlike Genshin Impact, Tower of Fantasy runs on Unreal Engine 4, and for those of you who don't know, that's the engine used to create beautiful games like Arkham City, the Final Fantasy VII remake, Make, Jedi Fallen Order, and tons more. And you can really tell with Tower of Fantasy. Some players aren't too hot on the graphics, but I myself love the style of the game. The game is incredibly vibrant, has an amazingly wide color range, beautiful effects, and fluid animations. Now don't get me wrong, the game is still in closed beta, meaning it has a long ways to go before it's truly ready for a worldwide release, and a lot of players will call it clunky because it, I mean, to be honest, it is a beta. But based on the current state of the game, it seems really solid and like it has a lot of promise for its official release. Being another free-to-play open-world anime mobile game with thoughtful puzzles, fantastic combat, and an engaging story and gameplay loop, Tower of Fantasy is looking like it will be Genshin Impact's strongest competitor on the market. At this point, after hearing all of this about Tower of Fantasy, you may be worried about Genshin Impact's future, so I want to dispel that concern right now. Hollyverse is not stupid. As disconnected from their audience as they may seem at times, they know how to operate their business. It's why they've gone from a medium-sized company with a few games to a multi-billion dollar one in just over a year. As much as players will argue that Genshin is dying and that Hoyoverse will lose all of its players soon, that's just not the case. Genshin Impact is the only game of its type, and it's a worldwide phenomenon that revolutionized and 
set the bar for mobile games going forward. Even if Genshin got no new zones for over a year, there would still be a dedicated player base that logs in nearly every day to progress their accounts and roll for characters. But you can definitely tell that regardless of the dedicated player base that's there, there's still a lot of people who are upset and would love to move on to something new. After all, the Genshin player base hasn't seen any new innovative permanent content since the game's initial release. Once you're at the end of the game, if you're tired of exploration, all you have is limited time events that play off of FOMO or Spiral Abyss. And not every player wants to do Abyss. So, all of this considered, why won't Hoyaverse add more permanent content to the game? Well, it's pretty simple actually. Genshin Impact doesn't have any competitors. In a constantly changing market, competition is necessary to drive productivity. Let's say one company made all of the forks in the world, and nobody ever came to compete with them. They would control both the quality of the forks and even price point to some extent. As soon as another company starts selling higher quality forks though, the first fork company has to up their ante so that the new company doesn't replace them as the number one company. To be honest, I, I don't know why I use forks there, it's just the first thing I thought of. But the same exact thing applies to video games. Games like World of War Warcraft didn't start truly starting to think forward with their development cycle until Final Fantasy XIV began to take some of the player base. And both games are good in their own way, but without competition on the market, even outside of just Final Fantasy XIV, World of Warcraft would remain a stale game. And if not stale, at least going downhill because Blizzard realized that they could take advantage of their player base. As they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that is exactly the mentality that Hoyaverse has right now. Now that Tower of Fantasy is in closed beta and gaining hype quickly, Hoyaverse is likely paying close attention. If it turns out that Tower of Fantasy is a good game, that means many Genshin players will choose to spend their time on that new game, and eventually money as well. Less active players negatively affects a company's value, and Hoyaverse would hate to lose that number one spot. Essentially, if Tower of Fantasy is a good game, a game that offers great story, combat, exploration, etc., then Genshin Impact will be forced to improve. There will need to be higher incentives to play Genshin, such as more permanent content, more daily resin, more weekly primo gem activities. There's honestly tons of different routes they could go, but they're never going to go there if they don't have to. If they can retain their current player base because nobody's directly competing with them, then what is their incentive to improve the game? After all, Genshin's player base is increasing with every single patch. As new characters are released, it brings new players into the game, and they're not going anywhere. At least, not until there's an alternative that's just as good or better. There is no guarantee that any of the changes I talked about will actually make it to Genshin Impact, but with competition on the way, the future is looking bright for both Genshin and open-world mobile games overall. Similarly to what happened with Battle Royale, Royale with Fortnite, Minecraft, Hunger Games, Apex Legends. As soon as one Battle Royale blew up, a bunch of companies hopped on that train, and I can definitely see that happening with Genshin Impact and open world anime mobile games. So keep your fingers crossed, folks. If Tower of Fantasy ends up being good, this will be the first step in the right direction towards getting tons more new, innovative, permanent content in Genshin Impact. Most of us love the game, and we just honestly want to play it more. If you've enjoyed, make sure to subscribe down below. I'm going to be covering a lot of different games here pretty soon because there's so many great new releases coming and Genshin Impact patches have been a little stale as of late. That being said, of course we're going to keep covering Genshin Impact on this channel. Also, consider following the Twitch if you want to come hang out. We do lots of fun stuff over there, including account reviews if you want to get on one of those. And other than that, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'll catch you guys later. Peace!